to get into hot takes of the week before we move off of college basketball because I got something. But... Sage, give it to me. I'll speed run it because we don't really have a debate here outside of the Q&A, but hot takes, um, so WrestleMania edition, speed run. First things first, this was the GOAT WrestleMania. Get over it. It was peak. Not going to lie. It was cinema. Stories were built up. Stories were paid off. Both main events were fantastic. Easy, easy peak, easy peak. No, no, no debates out of that outside of a specific Shawn Michaels Undertaker match that will always die with me. So, uh, second thing, second, if you don't think this is peak, um, w, I mean, WrestleMania, not gonna lie, I'll put you off even further. The Renaissance era is going to be the best era without a shadow of a doubt. They're making this mainstream, they're calling back to the attitude era. People are just cussing on television now, <laughs> they, they do not care anymore, making babies cry, all that. It is going right back to the attitude era you loved. And at that point, it's a matter of will you let the attitude players go? So Renaissance era will also be the peak, let alone if you don't like any of those arguments though, so far, women's wrestling. Speaking of women's wrestling, Domo hinted to it earlier. I ain't going to lie. Hot take. The women's still cooking. <laughs> the, the women are still dominating. The main events were the main events. They did a fantastic draw up with Seth, Drew, CM Punk, and then obviously the bloodline. But in general, the women's match is still and still champion right now. And last and certainly not least, just, just to throw a uh, spitball, the next person that's going to hold a World Heavyweight Championship or WWE Championship that the whole world will scream is because it will be his game with everybody saying L.A. Knight. Yeah. The L.A. Knight push is this year. You guys can go on for me. Okay. Um, be so. Well, it's going to go. well. It's going to be my last CC Dixa clip of the day. But um, yeah, top 10 influential basketball figure of all time. I'm going all the, all, all the way over there. I think uh, it doesn't really matter what the fuck happens from here on out. I think the impact is there from a player's perspective. We got to talk about Allen Iverson, Michael Jordan, Steph Curry, Larry Magic. She's in the echelon. Maybe not top five. That top five is crazy. But, you know, you'd have to name probably Oscar Robertson in there. Maybe Dr. J. But after that, I, th I think you'll make a case for CeCe. And my second hot take, that 1B logo is, uh, it's mid. Sorry, it's mid. <laughs> Just what? The fuck? <laughs> but, um... Yeah. I actually um, didn't off, off rip, let me see. Okay. Um, Curry... <laughs> This is off the dome, so I'm going to just see if it's the craziest take or not. Curry, Braun, MJ, Magic, Bird, Harden, PG, KD. Okay. Shaq. PG. Come on. Paul George, yeah. People say Paul George is their goat nowadays. You In terms that. of two-way wings. Two-way wings. Who you want to play like? Who do you want? All that stuff. I'd say people are starting to do that with Paul George. Are, now, are you, you saying wanna... PG is over CC? Is that, is that what you're like? No, I'm just their... I'm naming names. I'm naming okay, names. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm about to say. It. I'm stamping it. Dr. Um, J. Dr. J, debatable. It depends how you care about oh, so ABA. Or it's literally can't be an answer. It's not the craziest it's take. Not an answer. Oh, I didn't say Kobe. Kobe. I, it's not the craziest take. You probably could kick her out, but it's not the craziest take. There was some. It's not. It's not. There was, yeah, okay. Um, let me go. KD. No. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that was so crazy. It was kind of crazy. I, I guess. I guess. I'm naming names that I think you can rationally debate, and I think Kevin Durant is definitely one of those. Fingers, fingers. Um. Yeah. John Calipari. Man, you are a coward. John Coward Pari was instrumental for especially like the the 2010s when it came to the one and done era. But I don't know if y'all saw it. After landing a huge contract from Kentucky, he is now apparently going to accept a new contract to be the head coach of the uh, Arkansas Razorbacks. But that's because they have two big funders, one being the uh, heir or owner of the Tyson Foods Group, like the one that make the Tyson chicken nuggets. And then apparently, uh, I think it was one of the Waltons is also a part of this group because that way, you know, what my side of the timeline is surmised is that he can put together some of the best NIL valuation for these players to come to his school because he can't recruit off of other things that probably matter in a child's life. Um, you are a coward. You are no different to me than Nick Saban. Uh, actually, you might be worse than Nick Saban. I'll give Nick Saban the pass because he was older. So him retiring because he couldn't keep up in the NIL era, you know, he's old. He probably just needs to sit it down anyway. He don't got that much life left to live. You, my friend, are a younger person. So it is disgusting to me that you have just said, hey man, since like, I think it's like the past nine years, no final four appearances. I think a singular elite eight appearance, you know, no 35 win seasons. He's been not, not mid, he's been like worse than mid as a coach 
in a lot of these seasons. As far as coaching on the court goes, he's terrible too. So you are a coward because you had to run to the place where you can get the big money to try to get the big name players, which ultimately I hope does not work out for you. And I'm pretty sure it will not work out for you if you just compile a bunch of big name talents. But you know, you can just say you did it just to do it. Ain't John Calipari old though? Not as old as Nick Saban. He's a coward. He's 72. John Calipari He's a coward because the landscape of recruiting and the landscape of college basketball change and he's just adapting with the change that makes him a coward yeah he was never he was never in it for actually coaching he could he could never actually keep up in that regards uh if he could he would have stayed at a place that still had some cachet and still had a pretty good you know alumni fan base or alumni base they could still put up a lot of money but you had to go somewhere where you could put up even more money to try to put together teams because you can't recruit you can't you you, I mean, you can't compete. You should be able to you should be able to recruit without the NIL stuff. I just seen Don Staley do it. I, I don't I don't want to hear that bullshit. They lost I mean, five starters and, and was able to come back and win the national title. I don't I don't want to hear that. I feel you like suck. it's a difference between the men's and women's college game in terms of recruiting, especially how especially when it comes to the transfer portal, how quick niggas are to transfer. But even with that, that's not true. We yet. go through I mean, I maybe I, I don't know what you value in terms of what is important to a college coach. I would say a obviously winning national championships, but B, producing pros, especially when you're known as the one and done coach, producing pros. You can't name me two other coaches that are more decorated in producing pro basketball players than John Calipari. He's in the last 10 years, in the 10 plus years, last 14 years, he has produced maybe the most NBA players. And he might have produced the, especially guards in the last, de the last decade. Oh my God, the Kentucky guards are running the league. In terms of, like, I, I don't know how it's cowardly that he's now going somewhere where he can now throw more money at niggas to probably try to go win because he hasn't been doing it. You can call him a trash coach, that's fine, but to call him a coward when, I, again, winning a natty, number one in a lot of niggas' books. Producing pros is the second thing that you want from a college coach, and he does his fucking job. I don't think that that's necessarily inherently the case. One, there's not too much of a major difference in the way that the transfer portal works in, like, the men's and women's games. They all transfer at this point. Like, it is what it is except for out of South Carolina. When you have a real coach, you should be able to do all of it. You, you fix your face for Go ahead. I mean, in the last the last couple of years, I haven't heard of highly touted women basketball players transfer, for real. Like, a lot of them in abundance, like it is for the men's side. I haven't heard of yeah, it for follow, women's side. Do you follow, like, any news outlet that would feed you any women's basketball? Yes, on my, on my timeline, I will get an update about who's transferring. Yeah, I follow college sites that give that type of news so and, and Angel Reed, i'm saying man. i'm not saying none of them i'm saying as much as the men's game that that is what let me let me let me set the table i don't feel like in the women's game they are transferring at the rate that the men are transferring especially the upper end talent the higher echelon of talent yeah, I, the, the the third leading scorer this year like as far as average is just into the transfer portal today so i would again ask Whoa. you i mean deja kelly at unc we could go down this list of names in the last in the last two three years in terms of the elite talent are they transferring at the rate like the men because that's yes. what i'm saying i'm not saying yeah. they're not doing it. i'm saying the men are probably doing it more at least yes. from what i've seen Demo. yes you just aren't following these people especially especially with this being like i'm surprised you said that especially with like today happening like this is like one of the last days where people can either declare or uh uh transfer you know out of, out of your school or whatever say what your plans are before like the draft deadline and stuff like that comes to pass so i mean if that's the way you feel that's fine i would again just challenge that's what, exactly what i'm saying that's exactly what i'm saying cruz the upper excellent talent in cop for the men's side more of them are willing to transfer and are transferring compared to the upper excellent talent for the women at least from what i've seen if i'm wrong fuck it i'm wrong i'm just going from what i've seen i'm not saying women don't transfer but in terms of that top end elite talent they're not transferring at the rate that the men are and also who is that who are you even talking about because when they just if we're talking about the top echelon they would just declare for the draft what are you talking about i might be mistaken there too i mean that's not absolutely true but who, who? i'm asking you who you ask me who i'm asking you who? for me personally i mean the top one grant nelson for me last year grant nelson going out of north dakota state to go to alabama to play better that'll be my first one that'll be the first name i get north dakota state give me another one give me another he transferred. one transferred. i said Upper echelon talent, the player Grant Nelson is Grant Nelson out of town to play. Another one, please. Another one, please. Caleb Love. Okay, another one. I gave you two off the top of I my head. Um, off the top of my head. Go ahead. Did you give me four? Yes. I don't I remember you giving me four. four. I heard. Okay, cool. That's the two I can give you off the top of my head. Okay. Um. Yeah. No. I, I think I think he's a coward because he knows that he can't offer the stuff that would get 
people to build a program. And if you value, I guess, the giving the kids the NIL deal or whatever the case may be, then that would be perfectly fine. But to me, that's not what your job is is your job is to win games for the program your job is to have something that the people will buy tickets for and somebody might uh, uh agree that oh well the names year in and year out will get you there but you did that already so what's the difference here versus there I, it's not, I don't even think what he's about to transfer for is more money not transfer for i don't i don't think what he's about to take the coaching job for is more money is because he's running from the grind of providing real actual basketball training real actual coaching and building a program. I think it's running from the grind. Build a program. I don't, I don't think he's running from a grind. He did build a program for over a decade now of one and, one and done coach. Yeah, it was a different era. So now he is adjusting to what the landscape of college basketball is now, which is, is being spearheaded by NIL deals. His goal, I'm pretty sure, will still be the same of producing pros. That is what he's going to lead with. I will assume that's what he's going to lead with, the transfers. Or the transfers or these guys he's recruiting. He's going to throw money at them and tell them, Throw money in with the promise of, I can make you a pro. Look at my resume. That is literally Calipari's thing. His, his thing is producing pros. I would say for Calipari, him recruiting, a bigger point is him getting you to be a pro versus winning an addict. What about his program you. makes it makes you feel like it's weak? Specific. Oh, outside outside of the fact that they haven't won an addict. Because I feel like that's so like outcome driven. Uh, I mean, most things are outcome driven. But him not being able to even win games. Fuck a, fuck a natty. We're talking about from top to bottom. Because I know one team wins a natty. Uh, we're talking about winning games at a level that he once was able to. Something clearly happened, his lack of being able to coach or adjust versus the competition, and then him not being able to adjust in that regards. If we're talking about people going to figure out ways to become pros, I think people will quickly understand that, hey, he isn't the he isn't the end all be all in that conversation when it comes to doing that. There's probably more name recognition than that either way. Dang, I'm trying to find the 2022 roster or the, the one from this year to prove a point. Because I want to see if he's really producing pros anymore like that. I can't necessarily say to that point. I think in the past, yeah, what you're saying is perfectly fine, Damo. It was, hey, if you want to produce pros, go here. Like this is gonna be your thing. But I don't know if that's necessarily like the case anymore. And then also Producing a pro versus the longevity is another argument. Last year, he had five, four people, one, two, three. And I think some of these people even transferred in uh, to the school. So that's four people right there. None of them are like anything long lasting at all. Ty Ty Washington can't find a place. Oscar Tashibi, I think he has like a little spot jacob Toppin, yeah if his claim to fame is like yo i can get you in the pros that's that's a different conversation than i can keep you in the pros and i think there are other organizations that could yeah, probably keep you in the pros but i hear you i mean I still, that was a seller for one and done thing is producing a pro you I know mean, yeah we're done with that we're done with that though that's what i'm saying we're done with that are we you don't think we're out are of the we? one and done era and we're in the nil era no no, it, even in the NIL era, you can you're still gonna get a bunch of one and dones. Like, what are we talking about? But that doesn't mean that you're still in the one and done eras because one and done. If still in the good. okay, so it would depend on how many players are drafted that are only doing one year of college. And if we go back and look at this last year, and there's no way of me telling how long these niggas have been in college, but a lot of these names are still one and done players. Like you're still like so again until you start seeing NBA teams drafting older guys, drafting guys that have been in college longer, college system longer, or you have players that are just refusing to leave college compared to the past era. I mean, just because niggas got money now don't mean it's not a one and done era still. Like you're still not doing one and done. Now, let me ask you looking forward, do you not think that'll be true? People are going to stay in college more. They're going to be less one and done because of skill development. I could probably tell you who was and, the one and done. And, and, in theory, in theory, that makes sense on paper, but in reality, Niggas still dream of going to the NBA. A lot of there are people who dream of just having money for their family, but there are still people who have the dream of playing professional basketball, playing basketball in the NBA, being an NBA basketball player. That's still a dream. I understand that too. I think going forward, there's going to be a lot less of the one and done. So who can really build the program? Especially if that means you're going to have longevity in the league 